Hello and welcome to the Petticoated Swashbuckler. My name is Marin and uh, before we continue our 18th century sewing adventure I want to take a bit of time and talk about this little hiatus that I've had. Um, it was not planned and uh, you know I would have hoped it wouldn't have lasted as long as it's done. Uh, but in the beginning of November my back uh, kind of died on me a little. Um, I had horrible pain no matter what I did or how I sort of tried to position myself and um, there was like no relief, uh, very little sleep, um, just all around not a great time uh, to be alive. Uh, now if this had been like a normal year for me and I had been an employee somewhere I would have been off sick for at least like a month uh, I wasn't like super heavy duty painkillers and uh, just so I could get like you know a couple of hours of sleep and I was just I was just no good to anyone. Um, however since I'm currently a student <laughs> things are a little more complicated so uh, I had to focus my energy on healing and passing my exams and I had very little, you know, extra uh, energy <laughs> to edit and do YouTube things. Um, but my back is good again now, uh, so that's great. And I have lots and lots of plans and lots to show you. Uh, so I'm hoping I'll be able to like get back on my track now. Um, I also did, sorry, that's my cat just ruining my chair. Just don't. <laughs> Are you gonna pounce on my camera? No. Okay. Like, if I can just sort of... This... This is who is supervising me right now. Yeah, where are I going? Yeah, I have lots to show you. Um, um, I did sew a little bit while I was recovering, uh, just so I wouldn't go crazy. So my plan now is to give you like lots of nice things this winter, make up for the kind of dismal autumn. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy that. I also have a non 18th century project that I am so excited to share with you in a couple of weeks time. and. I have so much goodness planned for this year. <laughs> okay, so a few final words about the channel. It's been a thing for nearly a year now, and um, maybe I should do a sort of year in review thing. I don't know. Um, if what I would really like, uh, if there is any, is feedback. You know, is there something that you like particularly well? Is it something that you find annoying or difficult to understand or hard to watch? Let me know. I I am really passionate about my project and about sharing it with you, but I, I want it to be done in a way that, you know, that you guys like and that it's, that makes it easy for you to, you know, <laughs> pay attention to, to uh, feel inspired and uh, yeah I want it to be a little bit of a collaboration between us. Now um, I do also actually have a blog, uh, a more sort of traditional text blog. I've had that for a few years actually. Um, it's called, unsurprisingly, The Petticoated Swashbuckler. Uh, and it's been it's been fairly dead for the past almost two years. Uh, but my plan is that from sort of now on, everything I make, I will also try and remember to take photos, not videos, but photos of it, so that I can post it on YouTube and on my blog at the same time. Because I think I feel when I'm 
when someone's done something or I, I watched a video um, and I, I wonder like oh how did how did they do that thing you know how do they make that 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 item um having to sort of sit and sort of try and skip through the video to get to that sort of minute and a half of instructions um can be a bit tiresome so I thought if I combine the videos with a sort of more sort of step by step with text and illustration on the blog they can sort of accompany each other uh you know the one yeah they will be a good sort of set of companions alongside each other so that's my plan i'm hoping um that the blog will will make it even easier to follow my adventures and and be part of this this project um so i think that's all i wanted to say on with the show Hello and welcome to the Petticoated Swashbuckler. My name is Marin and I'm the cap of this ship. I'm in the process of recreating the wardrobe of an, a woman, an English woman named Anne Bamford, who died approximately 1780. Um, and after the last big, big project, um, the Italian gown, I felt like doing something small and nice and dainty and um, practical to bring along to lectures and on the bus, things like that. So I went through her inventory. Uh, it comprises of about 200 objects things and um, there are a lot of caps 12 caps one lace cap with blue ribbon a common caps with ribbons seven wired caps with ribbons Brussels lace lappets a pair and I do kind of need caps the small the, if you've seen portraits the ladies they have this little tiny lovely little white often quite fluffy and frilly and lacy linen things on top of their heads that's the cap that i want i i mean going through this i decided i'd make two caps so i'm gonna make one i'm gonna make the uh the common common cap with ribbons not quite sure what a common cap is though. I think, I mean, most of the caps are comprised of like two or three pieces. It's the, the sort of crown piece, the, the biggest one that kind of covers a bit of hair. And then it's um, a sort of a band or brim. And that's sometimes quite short and then sometimes it's really long and, and goes way down and it's looped up and very fancy. And then you can also have like a frill on the outside of that uh, brim so I think maybe I'm gonna try and make one of those I mean I have no idea what was a common cap for Mrs. Anne Bamford I'm guessing one that is not super fancy and maybe would have been uh, you know would have covered quite a lot of her hair I, I'm I'm imagining something that she would have used on a sort of daily basis. Um, maybe, uh, you know, just when she was doing things around the house, um, when she hadn't done her hair for a couple of days, that sort of thing. So I'm going to make one of those. I'm also really, really interested in trying one of the wired caps because they're so cool and so very mid 18th century or they feel very mid 18th century early and mid 18th century they are it's basically a cap but the ruffle around the head is bent in a sort of almost like a heart shape around the head so it might have been done some of them look like they're just done with um 
with starch but since the inventory specifies <laughs> seven wide caps wasn't that right yeah seven wide caps um there's definitely wire in those so i'm going to try and make one cap maybe one that's a bit smaller well, even though it needs to be big enough to like come forward enough that you will see the bend the heart bend or the, the pointy bit so gonna make a couple caps want to come along okay so i've cut out my pattern pieces for my two caps um this is for the uh, the common cap i found a really two really great resources online that i will link down below that basically go through the basic construction of 18th century caps and they seem to have been constructed of three pieces or three uh, kinds of parts it's the call uh, the brim and uh, sometimes a ruffle now for the common cap i thought i would try and make it without a ruffle see how that works because it's just going to be you know a common cap something to wear around the house something simple so this is the call and i made it quite big because i thought if i <laughs> if i can't be bothered to do my hair but I still want to be in costume, it'd be really nice to have a big cap to cover it all up. But I still wanted it to be elegant and nice. And so I came across these kinds of brims that instead of like one, one long continuous piece of brim all around the cap, you have two pieces. This is of course just half of one of the pieces, but it goes like that around. So you get like a dip at the forehead which I thought was nice, so I'm going to try that. Now for the wired cap, I found that the pattern in for the uh, the 1740s cap in uh, American Duchess, a guide to 18th century dressmaking, uh, would work quite well. And I really like the brim shape that they got there. I haven't cut um, a pattern piece for the ruffle because that's just one long strip of linen, but I am going to put a ruffle on this one because that's the part that needs to be wired. So let's go cut some fabric. I cut, uh, this is my common cap, it's cut from a very sturdy white linen and then I cut the uh, wide cap from finer linen and I've just folded in all the seam allowances except from the bottom hem and uh, basted them in place. And the pin marks where I'm gonna make an eyelet hole. So the tools I use for making eyelet holes is uh, a thin pointed awl, a needle binding needle from bone and a thicker awl also made from bone. So the first thing I do is I go in with my pointed awl, where the pin is, uh, just starting to separate those fibres out. You don't want to break the fibres, just separate them. Um, and when I've got like a small hole, a small opening, I go in with my needle binding needle. And I just sort of push that through very gently, widening that opening. Um, and then finally I go through with my thicker awl, uh, making the hole rounder until I'm happy. And this is the same, by the way, on both caps, both this one and the wide one. I don't use buttonhole stitches. I just whip open my eyelid, working from the right side and also from the sort of outside so that I can control the frame around my, uh, my eyelid. And when that... Uh, hole is uh, finished, it's all whipped open, I like to go back in with my big awl and I just widen it out again to give it a nice round shape. And the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to attach the strings that are to go through that eyelid hole and to be covered with the seam allowance that I haven't basted yet. I've got some linen braid, um, finger loop braided that I made a while back for something else and never got to use. So I'm going to use it now on both caps. I've just tied it off with a knot at each end um, and I'm just measuring the seam allowance at the bottom of the cap. Then I know that my braid needs to go a little bit lower than that so I'm just going to pin that in place. Uh, 
and repeat on the other side. I then stitched them to the seam allowance on each side just using linen thread. Both sides attached, it's time to push the cord through our newly made eyelet hole, which I thought would be really tricky, but it turned out to be, you know, fairly easy. I then went on to cover my string with the seam allowance to create a drawstring casing, so I was very careful not to pin through any of the, uh, the string, any of the braid, uh, so that it could still be drawn freely through that casing. Because I am a sucker for basting, and also because I really wanted to make absolutely sure I wasn't going to stitch through my drawstring, I went in and basted the uh, drawstring casing slash seam allowance down. Having made sure that my drawstring could still move, I went in and I sewed it down with small hem stitches. And uh, talking of small hem stitches, I decided to take this time to hem both of my cap pieces as well, or I should say all of my cap pieces. Both the calls, uh, all brims and the ruffle. And uh, this took time, I folded the already fairly small seam allowance in half and sewed it down and it took it took hours it took many 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 hours so i've just quickly put my hair up in like a a sort of 18th century very simple hairdo and then I just used the basting stitches around the call to sort of gather it up into the size because I got worried it looked a little bit big but I think, I mean, all gathered up, it doesn't look too bad I mean it's quite a big cap, it's quite voluminous, but that's quite fun um, kind of letting me fake having lots and lots of hair out and if we just take one of these brims that's gonna go like that. I think that's going to be quite nice. And then of course I'll, I'll um, you know, I'll have a ribbon over here, tight on with the ribbon. So I think, I mean, I know we're only like halfway through <laughs> this cap, but um, it's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. I'm a bit worried that it's going to be too big, you know, that it's going to that it was going to look like um, a chef's hat, for example, or one of those very biddy-like caps that I kind of think of as more Regency. But I think these are good. Guess I have to keep, you know, having these bits. This call is not going to have a ruffle because with the wired cap, I already have one ruffle to hem, and uh, it's not that fun. Having hemmed all my pieces, it was then time to assemble the brim pieces for my common cap. I just made sure they were uh, the same length and uh, you know fairly similar and also to make sure that the about the same amount of tip disappeared in the seam allowance on both sides i i fiddled a bit with how best to sew together to make a nice because this is going to be on the top front of my head and even though it'll probably be covered with a bow it would be a very visible place to have like a very uneven join 
So what I ended up doing was to sort of just clumsily tack it together and then fold both the seam allowances out to each side and uh, stitch them down, uh, not catching the outer fabric, just catching the, uh, the seam allowances, uh, the hems on each side. And uh, it kind of worked. I mean, it's, it's fairly even, fairly symmetrical. Having uh, finished the brim and the call of uh, both caps, it was time to make the ruffle of the wired cap. And as you can see, it's just a very long, thin piece of fine linen. And I've turned in the seam allowances and just basted those down. And I'm going to do like I did on the other pieces and just fold that seam allowance in half to create a very narrow brim or hem. But this is the piece that's going to be wired. And I have no idea what kind of wire they would have used. So I found some, you know, sturdy but still light copper wire. And I thought I'd try with this one. And it worked kind of, you know, it's okay. Now, the really tricky bit was to fold that seam allowance around the wire and stitch it down without the wire sort of, you know, curling up or uh, jumping out or misbehaving in any other way, um, which is, it did, it was a very uh, naughty piece of wire, it did not want to behave. I used pretty much all my sort of fine motor skills and coordination to be able to hold the wire steady, fold the fabric over it and stitch it down uh, at the same time. And as you'll see, the moment I let go, <laughs> the wire just sort of coiled back up. But I, I managed it in the end. Um, and as you can see, it gives a very nice, very flexible, but yet sort of rigid, uh, wired brim that does hold the shape. When the wiring was finished, I, uh, I hemmed the remaining three sides of the ruffle. And then I went in and I, I made some whip gathers uh, on uh, the other, the, the non-wired edge of the ruffle, just by sort of whipping over the, the, uh, the hem and uh, gathering it up uh, into the, the length that I wanted. Then came the time to attach ruffle to brim and uh, brim to call using uh, whip gathers and, uh, and whip stitches. And uh, then I attached the little blue ribbon to my wired cap. After all, it was wired caps with ribbons that was mentioned in the inventory. And I just used very small and very, very spaced back stitches to attach this ribbon as I thought it would give it the elasticity it needed as it's going to go on and off and on and off of my head. I then put it on and uh, start to adjust the wire to give me that sort of very peculiar dip and the heart shape. And uh, this this took some fiddling. Uh, it was not it was not easy. It was not quickly done. Um, and to be frank, I'm a bit worried that it will lose its shape between every time I wear it, and then I'll have to like spend an hour making it the right shape again every time I'm going to wear it. But I do like the shape in the end, and for some reason it makes me feel like Queen Elizabeth the I, I feel like I've seen similar shapes on Elizabethan heads. With the wired cap, I did everything very right. I did the whip gathering on the call, as well as the ruffle, but for my common cap, I decided to just use my basting stitches. Just you know, gather those up. And uh, and it worked really well. Uh, I had basted the hem, you know, evenly enough to give me a nice gather, and it saved me a lot of time. And then I just went in and I whip-stitched the call to the brim. I 
I was a little worried that the whip stitching would make the calls look lumpy. But as you can see, when I sort of press out the seams um, from the wrong side, as well as from the, the outside, it's, it's quite nice. It's fairly neat and flat. The uh, common cap also had ribbons, so I'm, I've got one ribbon that I've cut. Uh, one side has been sort of dagged at the end, while the other is still sort of just cut straight. And it's the straight cut side that we're going to attach to the, uh, the call of the cap. So first I'm, I'm just attaching it this way. And when that's sewn in place, I fold the ribbon over, hiding the raw, the raw edge of the ribbon. And using the same thread, I stitch it to the edge of, uh, of the call. And finished, it looks like this. And it's a very sturdy way of attaching a ribbon, by the way. It works really well. And with this, we're done! I am really happy with how my wide cap came out. Uh, the shape is just so good and it's just sweet and cute. Um, it sits maybe a little too far back on my head, but I think that might be because I didn't do my hair properly before putting it on. Um, this was when my back was really killing me and standing up for more than like three minutes was agony. I really like my common cap as well, even though I feel like it'll look even better with the right sort of hairdo underneath. I did not spend any money on this project, using only scraps and things I already had in my stash. Uh, the common cap took 7 hours to sew, uh, the wired cap took twice that long, 14 hours, because of the wire. But I really do feel like I'll get so much good use out of these caps. Until next time, bye!